Have you ever wondered what's the story behind the man who robbed McDonald's? Today, we're taking a look at him robbing $24 million without anyone knowing. The McDonald's Monopoly promotion is a marketing campaign run by McDonald's, which first began in 1987 in the United States. During this promotion, McDonald's customers have the chance to win various prizes, including cash, food items, or other merchandise, by collecting game pieces that are typically found on certain McDonald's food packaging. These game pieces feature properties from the classic Monopoly board game, and participants can win by completing property sets or finding rare pieces. Over the years, the promotion has become widely popular and has expanded to other countries besides the United States. However, it faced some controversies due to fraud and manipulation in the past, leading to tighter security measures being implemented. Despite this, it remains a highly anticipated event for many McDonald's customers. Welcome to Money Doc TV, a channel dedicated to entrepreneurs who risked it all to create today's most iconic brands. Let's get started. A brief history of McDonald's Monopoly. The McDonald's Monopoly season has returned. 25 years after it debuted. Although the yearly competition is widely regarded as a rather fascinating cultural event, who else could argue with free fast food? There has been some controversy surrounding it. When more players participated, McDonald's introduced instant winnings that could be redeemed for in-store prizes and board pieces. The first one, held in 1987, featured prizes valued at $40 million. Among the more alluring rewards this year are two $1 million cash out an NHL All-Star Weekend trip, and a vacation provided by Delta. The McDonald's website has a comprehensive list. Ben Affleck is directing and Matt Damon is attached to act in a heist movie about his scam, which is already in the works due to the intricate nature of the narrative. McMillions, a brand new HBO documentary series, also explores the concept. How the scam worked out? Jacobson, often called Uncle Jerry, was formerly Simon Marketing's director of security. Simon created the game pieces for McDonald's advertising contests in the 1990s, such as the Monopoly and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire games, where participants could win prizes worth up to $1 million. Jacobson was responsible for keeping an eye on the game pieces at McDonald's promotional events. Federal officials announced the arrests of Jacobson and seven of his associates in 2001. However, in the mid-1990s, Jacobson discovered a way to rig the popular game so that the most lucrative winning game pieces would almost always find their way to people he knew. People who then shared millions of dollars in winnings with him. The Daily Beast revealed that in addition to being the head of security, Jacobson was also constantly watched over by an impartial auditor. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, McDonald's conducted a number of campaigns centered around the Monopoly game. To open those products without the auditor seeing, Jacobson had to slip away into the men's restroom, which was the one location the female auditor couldn't follow him. On his trip to McDonald's packing facilities, Jacobson would stop at airport restrooms, open sealed packets containing winning game pieces, toss them into his palm, and replace the winning stickers with ordinary, non-winning ones before resealing the package. The Daily Beast claims that in 1998, Jacobson would entice his nephew to join the plot by offering him the same prize, a $200,000 game piece for $45,000 up front. Jacobson continued to run the con into the 1990s. He sold game pieces to people in his classic car club, to a man he met at the airport in Atlanta, and to Andrew Glom, a gambler and former con artist in Florida, who distributed winning game pieces to his circle of pals. Aside from the upfront cash payments was that Jacobson insisted his associates pass the winning game pieces to individuals in other states rather than claim the winnings themselves in order to avoid raising suspicions because a number of winners had ties to him and lived nearby. Similar to Jacobson, the recruiters would usually need the ultimate winners to make advance monetary payments. How Federal Authorities Noticed a Prevalence of McDonald's 
Federal authorities eventually noticed a preponderance of McDonald's winners, whose permanent residences were clustered in Georgia, where Jacobson lived, where he had previously worked as a police officer for four years, despite Jacobson's attempts to distance himself from the people who eventually claimed the winning game pieces. William Fisher, the 1996 $1 million winner, was the subject of a tip that the FBI received in March 2000. In 2001, when McDonald's introduced a new promotional game the FBI was prepared with wiretaps on both recent suspicious winners and Jacobson, the head of security who lived close to a winning cluster. In August 2001, the FBI detained Jacobson along with seven collaborators and charged them all with criminal conspiracy to commit mail fraud. The plan was a massive one, netting almost $24 million in cash and prizes. Aftermath of Special Agent Rick Dent's Collapse in 2000, everything began collapsing when Special Agent Rick Dent called to investigate the big winners of the McDonald's Monopoly game. He discovered that all the big winners had been lying about how they got their game pieces and that a number of the winners had been listing their home addresses across the United States, but their annual checks were being rerouted to Jacksonville, where they all actually lived. Michael Hoover claimed to have gotten the winning piece from a convenience store and the beach he supposedly visited the same day. The undercover agents left Michael unaware they were listening in on every word and mentioned Uncle Jerry by name. The FBI seized all of his assets, arrested anyone with any association to the scam, and 50 people were convicted of mail fraud and money laundering. At a news conference announcing the charge Charges, then U.S. Attorney General John Ashcroft stated, This fraud scheme denied McDonald's customers a fair and equal chance of winning, and the FBI worked to put together Jacobson's extensive network of collaborators. More than 50 persons in all were found guilty of conspiracy and mail fraud. Although the government never disclosed the precise amount of money that Jacobson made from the scam, it was stated during his trial that he would take up to 60 winning game pieces and would normally charge between $45,000 and $50,000 for each sticker. He could have easily made more than $3 million at that rate. Additionally, McDonald's severed its relationship with Simon Marketing almost after, and the two businesses filed lawsuits for breach of contract. Ultimately, McDonald's settled the legal dispute out of court by giving Simon Marketing $16.6 million. Back then, McDonald's CEO Jack Greenberg issued a statement saying, McDonald's is committed to giving our customers a chance to win every dollar that has been stolen by this criminal ring. Uncle Jerry pled guilty and was sentenced to over three years in prison. He also had to pay back $12.5 million in restitution and forfeiture. He finished his sentence in 2006 and still pays $370 every month in restitution. McDonald's effectively cut ties with Simon Marketing and gave away $24 million across the United States to random restaurant visitors as an apology to their loyal and unsuspecting customers. We really hope you enjoyed today's video, How a Man Robbed McDonald's for $24 million Without Anyone Knowing. Be sure to leave a like and comment below on what you loved about our video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss another great video. Until next time, we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Remember, no dream is too big.